So in the second part now of a uh, notebook, we will look at the optimization part. So how can we actually now, after initializing a new network, how can we optimize the parameters to something we want? To, so for a task, for a loss, etc. In this first cell, I just define again some functionality because what we will do is we will take a few new networks. So as we have seen the base new network with just a few uh, hidden layers and we will train it with different optimizers. With these three different optimizers, we can, for example, compare how it does for accuracy, the task actually changes the metric on it, and how, for example, different optimization strategies work. Therefore, in this, this cell is basically very similar to the code you have seen in tutorial 3. I will not go through it in detail, but we have, for example, the same training loop, the same saving and loading idea, Additionally, we just load um, the test and validation scores, so we can actually see um, a plot over epochs, how actually the, the different uh, validation accuracies, test accuracies perform. So as a first step, let's take how do we actually implement our own optimizer in PyTorch, because PyTorch you have seen usually has a package torch.optin, right, to give you already some uh, pre-installed uh, optimizers. Well, here we want to implement our own. So let's first implement here our optimizer template, where we have initializer function. We take all parameters and a learning rate, because a learning rate usually is used in all common optimizers in deep uh, learning. The zero cut function you already know. Um, is doing basically a zero, so it uh, removes all existing gradients in all parameters and sets them to zero. Well, then the second function we have to implement is the step function, which is actually doing this op updating, which is different for each optimizer. So the zero grad is the same for each optimizer, while the step function is act actually what we want. We also just say torch uh, no grad because PyTorch actually also supports second order gradients, so gradients through gradients, but this is not what we are right now interested in, so let's just define it here to be sure. What I do here is basically saying for each parameter, if a parameter has no gradient, which is then none, we skip the parameter just to be sure that we don't get any errors, and if, uh, if we have gradients, we define here function update parameter, which we will now change according to our different optimizer we will use. So let's first run it. And then we can start with SGD. So SGD, Stochastic Gradient Descent, as you know, does nothing else than actually changing the weights in the direction of the gradients. So as simple as this equation up here, we can also implement it down here. So we say SGD, in the update param steps, we have P update. So this change we have is actually minus the learning rate times the gradient, and we can just add it here in place, uh, which saves memory, as we also don't need any computation graph. So you see, this is how we can just implement our SGD optimizer, which is quite easy. Now let's take it a little step further, namely how can we implement the momentum. So as you know, the momentum basically takes the exponential average over the past gradients, um, which can be then less noisy and help in certain places. We will see it below where especially it helps. And it is also quite easy to implement. So what we do down here is first define the parameter, so basically this beta 1 here. Uh, so how strong do we actually want to keep the momentum and what weight do we want to give the new input gradient? We store then here a dictionary of the momentums for all different parameters, which we start with zero. And then here in the update parameter function, it is relatively simple. So we can say one minus momentum times p grad, which is this average update, and then add it down here in place so that we have our update with SGD plus momentum. So now after SGD with momentum, we can take one step further and look at Adam. Adam basically uses also the momentum, but adds the adaptive learning rate, as you have seen in the lecture, which is also very beneficial for certain loss surfaces. Again, we will look at it below. 
And additionally, it has these bias correction factors. So when you have, for example, the very first batch in SGD with momentum, you see that this update one here actually uses a zero vector for the beginning. So in the beginning, we actually start quite slowly because we assume that all the previous batches have been zero, although there haven't been any previous batches. These correction factors actually then correct, for example, the men momentum, the exponential average for this. In Adam, so below here in PyTorch, looks now a little bit different, so a little bit more complicated, but we can go through it step by step. We have the two betas, which are up here, the basically the exponential averaging factors. The epsilon is used down here as a, well, as a factor to ensure that we don't go out of numerical stable values and don't encounter here, for example, zero, which would lead it to infinity. The parent step is basically which step we are in. This is needed, as you see, for this, um, for this correction factor. We define it here just for every parameter because it can happen actually that you would have different number of updates for different parameters and you would like to actually uh, remember it here. Finally, we will then remember this momentum as we have seen in SGD plus now the second momentum for this adaptive learning rate as you can see. In the update param step, what we first do is we say, well, we have now one more update for this parameter. We calculate our momentum factor, our second momentum factor with the betas. We then use the bias corrections and then just calculate down here. So we see that second momentum has then here this bias correction, um, which is fairly easy to do. And therefore, we already can update again our new um, model. Finally, then, we can compare our optimizers on model training. Um, so we will start with a base network. As I've said, we use here with activation and initialize it with a k-ming initialization, as we had before. We can now take uh, our three optimizers, SGD, FGD with momentum, and Adam, and run them all on this model to check actually how the different, um, well, the different optimizers different uh, metrics basically get. So we want, we would have expected now, Adam is probably the most uh, strongest or the most sophisticated to do this task. But if you compare these, you actually see that all of them perform well. So SGD already performs well also the test AQC, while SGD with momentum, okay, has a slightly lower, but it's again rather noise when specific. And Adam has again a slightly higher. So these are all not very different scores. As you can also see, the validation accuracy is all in a similar range and still quite noisy. And therefore, we can basically say for this easy, simple neural network, all optimizers actually perform equally well. This is also part uh, of a reason, of part of a reason why they actually perform similar is because we use this k-ming initialization. We would have used now a different random initialization, for example, then Adam is more robust against these things, while SGD uh, is likely failing on wrong initializations. So this, these are, of course, on your networks, but there are specific loss surfaces where you can show that Adam is better in theory compared to plain SGD. One loss of surface you have already also seen in uh, the lecture are called pathological curvatures, and one I plot it here below, so I just have a small plotting function to show you arbitrary loss surface is, for example, this one here. So you see that we have here a raven where we actually want to get our optimizer in. So the y-axis or the z-axis here is for loss. And we want to minimize the loss, right? So we would want to actually get to this spot down here. And we let our optimizer start, for example, up here. Then the different optimizers might optimize differently, but we want them to focus actually to go down here in the W2, where I said, so these are two parameters over which this loss surface can span. And we would like our optimizers to actually find this point, meaning that optimizers storm in this W2 direction. While for W1, it just finds 
this center point and doesn't jump in between. So this is something which is usually the problem of SGD, as we will see below. So this is a lost surface with the two parameters W1 and W2. And we will now run our three optimizers starting from 5.5. So this is up in this corner. And we'll check how, where actually the different optimizers will land. So again, here's some code. Feel free to look uh, closer at it. It's not really too important or interesting. Uh, because it's simply applying these optimizers and optimizing two parameters. And if we plot it now in 2D to actually look at how SGD, FGD with momentum and atom performed, you see that SGD actually jumps around here in the W1 direction. This is because it once it hits, let's go up here, these points where actually the gradient is very strong for W1. So it actually then it takes a big jump again out and has to go back in until it again jumps out. Well, uh, SGD with momentum, if it jumps on this side, it realizes, okay, it has been already seen the gradients in a different direction. Therefore, this noise is jumping around there is dampened and it goes smoothly to the optimum down here. The same does as Adam because it also uses momentum. These uh, loss surfaces are of course not limited to a 2D version as we have here W2 and W1. This can be in high dimensional spaces and there you can already imagine this will be quite tricky for SGD in case you have these kind of loss surfaces. Another loss surface we want to look at are steep optima. So steep optima is also something you have seen in the lecture, uh, namely that what happens if you have actually a plane surface here, so the title is actually incorrect, it should be steep optima. Um, you have here, for example, a surface which has very similar values, so very little gradient, and then suddenly has these peaked minimas where we have taken here just a Gaussian and flipped it around. So you want to get into one of these very steep optimas, but how do you actually configure your optimizer? Because up here you would need, if you take SGD, a very high learning rate, Otherwise, you just stand still. Well, if you come close here, you need a very small learning rate to not jump directly out. And that's exactly what happens. So let's use here SGD, SGD with momentum and Adam to um, run on the surface. And you see SGD, what SGD actually is doing. So the starting point is down here. It walks slowly until it reaches its optima. Once it reaches for optima, and gets in one of these borders of a lost surface, it has again a strong gradient and jumps completely out. So basically from here jumps in one step here and is then stuck because the gradients are way too small. If you use a smaller learning rate, it barely is just stuck on this point. SGD with momentum has a similar uh, problem. It reaches this uh, edge of uh, the minima and as the gradient is so high, it jumps out. And if we actually here remove the limitations, you will see that it continues walking because of the momentum to minus six, minus four, would continue even further. Um, it doesn't get that it basically has to go back. While in Adam, if we look at Adam, we see that it first takes much larger gradient steps. And then once it reaches in here, it takes very small ones because it has this adaptive learning rate which then realizes okay there's a very steep gradient so I should reduce the learning rate and actually it's nicely optimizing in here. So this is why you have seen now okay Adam in especially these loss surfaces is better but the question now of course remains what optimizer should I now use because in the previous linear neural network we have seen that Adam doesn't significantly outperform SGD for example. And there are also still actually networks where SGD can outperform Adam. So there are also a couple of papers which have shown that Adam, all through it is right now the default way to go. So if you have a new network, usually Adam is a very good idea to use. SGD is not necessarily always worse than it. One idea which is right now out in the research community and strongly supported is this SGD with momentum can actually generalize better than Adam. Because if you have, so let's see again, our loss surface up here. 
This one is less likely to actually happen, but what is likely to happen is that you have these flat large minima and you have these very sharp minima. You have seen that Adam is very good in optimizing also the sharp minima, while SGD is not able to get in here. And this, is, this can actually be an advantage, because you are optimizing on a training function, right, on a training set. And the test set on which you actually want to measure the performance is not using the exact same low surface, because we have different data. Right, and there is right now a strong hypothesis that actually you can view it as having the training function a little bit shifted, or a little bit alternated, and this is your test function. And if you have these very steep optima, it can be that you actually have a very big difference. So you see if you take the steep optima and shift just a little bit in your testing function, the point that the optimizer has found is actually not a good one on the test function. Well, if you go with flat minimum, then you can see that you can actually shift this function more, but you can still stay in a similar loss region. And this is why it often said that STD generalizes a little bit better than Adam, because it doesn't find these optimas, and Adam is then called over-optimizers, because it finds these very little tiny optima, which are probably a little bit better on the training set, but can be worse on the test set. So this is why you should still keep in mind that Adam is not perfect or has to be better than FGD. Uh, Adam is often better than FGD, but there are also cases where this is not necessarily always the case. One of them we actually see in the next tutorial, in tutorial 5, where the popular uh, network of ResNets, you might have already heard, have a property that usually or sometimes um, SGD optimized versions of ResNet outperform uh, Adam optimized versions of ResNet because they have especially these kind of loss surfaces. This is for the next tutorial, so in this tutorial, as a conclusion, we have seen how we initialize our neural network. The initialization depends on the input and the output size of the linear layers. It depends also on the nonlinearity we have found. For ton H, it's usually good to use Xavier, while in the way, for example, we have to scale the variance by 2 because we lose uh, some by, well, by our setting to 0, half of a negative right? In optimization, again, we have seen that momentum and adaptive learning rate can be very important for specific loss surfaces, but it is not necessary that actually always Adam outperforms SGD.